was a sinner, but I can pardon to receive from my with us today in the presence of God. Amen? Amen. What could be better, huh? Amen? Ooh. It is good to see all of you here. Glad you're with us. 
just want to make mention it's the last Sunday of the month, so there is isn't a service tonight, so um, Pastor's got his jeans on, so that's the last <laughs> Sunday of the month. We know when that happens, there's no service that night, right? So there's no service tonight, so, but this week, come back Wednesday night is our children's and youth ministry, and we start feeding them around 6.30, and then we have the service, and uh, they out at 8 o'clock, we get them home for school. Uh, there will be online Bible study that will be, Pastor does at 7 o'clock online only, on Wednesday night. Then Thursday night is our CFI, it's our Bible study, and we have snacks also, and that's at 7 o'clock on Thursday evening. Amen? Uh, we got a few announcements. I know that I wouldn't do it justice to make all of them, so I think Pastor's going to have Pam to do it later or whenever, but there is a food barrel out there, a food bank we do that once in a while. She'll elaborate on it too, uh, so that's out there to bring dry goods and stuff for the next three weeks if you would, and we can do that. So, Pastor, I guess we'll do birthdays and anniversaries now. All right. I know we've had a few birthdays and anniversaries. Anyone have a birthday or an anniversary? Trenton, I'm not sure. Looking around. Yep, Trenton's got a birthday. Raymond has one. It looked like be the 49er birthday boys, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, she had a whole happy month Happy birthday to you. Exactly what day Brenda's is on, but I've already seen on Facebook she has a whole month. <laughs> Pastor, does that say something for you? Brenda's having a whole month of birthday. I'm just saying. Which, which Brenda? What which Brenda? Brenda? That one? So I'm just saying I could well, You do the same seat. thing. I, <laughs> maybe it's the name Brenda. I don't know. Is it my turn? Good morning, everybody. Amen. <laughs> Praise God, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, good to see each and every one of you. And uh, you know what, I was thinking about something, God is good. And when? All the time. God is good, amen. Praise God. I was thinking this morning, I was getting ready, that uh, we say that, but I mean it. I I was riding around town yesterday, and Brent and I just laid, I said, you know, God is so good. God is just so, so good, Amen. It's wonderful, man. I'm having an exciting time right now. God is, God is so good. Amen. There was, oh, I like that song, Brother Fred. A, a new name written down, Glory. You know, one day Jesus' disciples were out doing all kinds of things like healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils. They came back so excited. They said, Jesus, you wouldn't believe what we've been doing. We've been casting out devils. They said, hold it. Rejoice not because... You're able to do that, but rejoice because your name Amen. is recorded Amen. in heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Why don't you give the Lord a good hand for saving your soul, writing your name down, and uh, giving you the opportunity to go to God's great heaven. Amen. Praise God. We, uh, we get, we got, we're, I, I can just feel the presence of God this morning uh, so tremendously. I, I know that God is going to bless us in a mighty, mighty way. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord here in prayer. And, uh, I, are there any announcements I was supposed to make? No service tonight. Uh, so enjoy your family. I, I really want you to think about this. We, we cancel the last Sunday night of every month for that purpose. We kind of call it family guy. And, uh, you know, take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. Uh, if you don't have any family that you normally get together with, well, get together with them. You've got the whole afternoon into the evening. If you've got to drive somewhere or call them up, have them over for a cookout or whatever, God honors the family. Amen. And, and so we want you to really, really do that. Amen. Praise God. Uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to minister um, to several needs. I, I've got some very special ones this morning. Brother Bob Myers is home this morning. He was ready to come to church and just could not make it. He needs our prayers. Brother Ray and Kay are still cover, recovering from a terrible cold. And Lonnie called this morning. And Sister Jean was very sick. And uh, I'm not sure exactly. He may have had to take her to the hospital. I don't know. But pray for Pray for them. Always be praying for Chuck and for Becky, Brad Horst, and, and Kenny. Kenny needs our prayers. And 
Brother Poe, and, and there's several of us, and you can throw me in there if you want to. Uh, we could all use our prayers. Joe was sick today, our son Joe. <laughs> and my son Joe, he was going to be here this morning, and, and he's got something going on. So uh, we want to just believe God for all of these things. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, as we come to you today, we just first of all come with praise and thanksgiving. Lord, you're more wonderful than we can ever imagine, God. You're more than we need, God. You're, you're our all in all. You're our everything, God. And we just have to stop and lift up holy hands and glorify the name of Jesus and, and give you praise, God, for you are great and you are wonderful, Lord. And we just love you for it. And we thank you, God. And we just uh, pray, God, that you will touch each one of these needs, God. You know and specifically the need in everybody's life and all of those on the, the wall behind us God there's many many that need a touch of healing and deliverance and salvation and financial blessing in their life God Lord there's nothing that you can't do and you're the master of it all and we're going to give you the praise for it in Jesus name amen praise God I'm going to ask Sister Pam Poe she would come up right now she is our ladies director and she's been out just coming up with all kinds of ideas, and they're good ideas. You can come up here. Yeah, come on up here. There, that way they'd be able to see you better. And um, there's a thing called a shoebox, which I've known about for several years. It's a, it's a Franklin Graham uh, thing that he does every year. Come on over here. Don't be shy. Anybody think Pam's shy? But to listen to her, what she got to say. So when you all came in today, you probably saw a whole bunch of these shoeboxes stacked up by the doorway. And it's from Samaritan's Purse. It's called Operation Christmas Child. And what it is, is I have been getting these for the last several years and giving them to my grandchildren, giving them some money to go to Walmart and fill these boxes. They go to little children all around the world, ages uh, 2 to 14, I think. And um, what happens when those kids open this up, they also get the gospel in their language the message of Jesus Christ. And I firmly believe that if we can reach the kids all around the world and they grow up as Christians, we won't have this ISIS, Hamas, all this stuff that we have today. So I am so for this program. And my ladies group's excited about it. I hope you guys get excited about it. But what you do is just take a box in the back, or if you have a shoe box at home, or some people use those little Tupperware, uh, like Tupperware or whatever kind of boxes, plastic boxes with lids that are about the same size. Inside there is a label, and it says, boy or girl, you choose which one you want to get um, your box full of for. And it has two to four years, five to nine years, and ten to fourteen year olds. And you just mark which one. And then you can pull this label off and stick it right down here on the front of your box. Um, and what you're going to do on the back of that, it tells the kinds of things to put in it and the things not to put in it. You know, no perishables, no food, no toothpaste, no liquid, stuff like that. But washcloths, soap, combs, shoes, socks, um, toys. Um, there's just all kinds of things that you can get to fill these boxes. One of the big things that I would urge you is school supplies. The girls over in these countries, some of them, if they don't have school supplies, they do not get to go to school. And if they don't get to go to school, they are oftentimes end up in sex trafficking. And so it's real important to put paper and pencils and pens and a pencil sharpener and that kind of stuff in there. Please take a box. We need them back by the 19th, that Sunday morning. And I will take them to Trinity Baptist, who is a, a, dis, a collection center, they will take them to Camdenton. Camdenton will load the big trucks, and these will go overseas mm -hmm. and to all around the world. So please get involved. They do ask if you can put a $9 donation in it. Some can, some can't. I always just throw a $10 bill in it, or you can pay your shipping online. But, it, but send the box, or get the box, regardless. Even if you don't have the $10, get a box. I urge you. Thank you. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Amen. Now the reason some of you came to church this morning, you have so much love and friendship in your heart that you want to shake somebody's hand. So why don't you stand up with us this morning all over the building, give you about 93 seconds. We're going to give you 93 today. You get out of your seat, shake somebody's hand, tell them you were glad they came to church today.
children. That's what it's all about. Amen. As Jeremy's making his way over here, he's come to take your money this morning. I don't know what that means. I gave all of mine to my wife, so I don't have it there, but I forgot to do something this morning. Does anybody know what I am? Excited. Amen. Are you excited about Jesus this morning? Praise God. Give him another hand of glory. Throw him for a loop there just for a second. It is good to see you guys here in the house of God this morning. 
How many came in here with a little bit of a... Uh, no? How many came in here with a... Uh, I'm excited. I'm encouraged. I'm ready to be in the house of God. I'm ready to see what God has for me this morning. You know what? You guys don't get the pleasure of what I get to see up here. I get to sit up here on the drums, and it's just amazing to see during you guys worshiping or during you guys walking around shaking hands, and I'm going to speak on, on something that's really dear to my heart right now. It's my grandboys. Okay? As I see this Jay's about 20 months old, not even two years old, and he's just swaying, and he's just, and he's clapping his hands, whether it's on beat or not, it is there, okay, and he is sitting there just enjoying what God has for him, whether he knows it or not, he just enjoying being in the presence, okay, and it's, that's how we should be, we're just here to enjoy the presence of God, here to enjoy what God has for us this morning. And God has a great day planned for you. It's up to you to choose whether to receive it or not. Choices. We all make choices every day. You know, there's a word that, uh, that came across my mind yesterday. There's a song that was playing. It's called Joy in the Morning. Okay? There's no way that I can sing like Torn Wells, but... There will be joy in the morning, okay? And it does not matter what somebody says. It does not matter a report that I heard. It does not matter the job that I'm involved in. And I really, there will be joy in the morning. Okay? God speaks of that. He's going to give us something. He's got something laid out for us. He's got something better in store for us. It's up to us to choose it. Do you, do you choose joy? Or do you choose the, I'm here, let's see what we can do. No, no I choose joy. I choose to, to live for him with the, the, my utmost. I choose to live for him with, the, with every ounce in my body Amen. to choose joy. Because we can look at it so many different ways. Because I guarantee you, each one of you probably deal with something. But you know what? That something is not bigger than the one. Amen. 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 I kind of debated on this, but, but I'm going to. I've got a little almost three-year-old at home that uh, this morning I had some worship music playing, and I was doing something, and I glance in there, and he's got his guitar wrapped around his, and he's playing it. But how many know that sometimes when you're three years old, you may not have everything going on. He's, he's in there playing his guitar in his underwear. <laughs> and his Hulk mask on. And he's playing his guitar. And not only is he playing his guitar, but then he worships. <laughs> and then he plays some more because he, he heard the music going. So he had to go run, get his guitar, come back into the living room, and just go at it. You know, they said David danced yeah. in his underwear. Yeah. That little boy over there played guitar in his underwear and worship God. It is time for us to worship God in our wholeness. <laughs> we're getting ready to go into worship, and we're going to sing praises to God, and we're also going to worship God by giving of our offerings, our tithes and our offerings. We got the offering baskets here on the altar, one in the middle, mail it in, Venmo app, however you feel free to give back to the church, and you're giving what God has blessed you with, okay? That's all God asks. He says, if you be faithful to me, I'm going to be faithful to you. Amen. Amen. So we're getting ready to go into worship. I want you guys to give God everything. Give him your utmost. Give God your worship. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this great day that you have given us, Lord. We thank you for this great country of ours, Lord, that we can serve you, we can worship you, and the freedoms that we have to do it. God, we just ask, Lord, that you just be with us this day, Lord. Lord, you receive our tithes, you receive our offerings. God, we just ask you to receive our worship. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, I thought about something just a little bit ago while a preacher was talking. You know, sometimes we got to go to work, and oh my goodness, I'm at work, and it's such a bummer and all that stuff. You know, Paul and Silas praised God in shackles in prison, you know, in a dungeon. It was horrible back then, and they still praise the Lord. So 
I don't care what the circumstances are. We can praise the Lord. Let's all stand if you would. Amen. Lord 
bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Lord, turn His face toward you and give you peace. Lord, bless you and keep you. Make His face shine upon you. job this morning. Amen. Amen. You know people are keeping track of your what you do. Make sure you do it right. When you announce a 93 second break, 
and somebody has the nerve to count. <laughs> My grandson, Joey, said, Papa, it was 271 seconds, all right, so now you know how long you took this morning, amen. I believe it was about uh, 35 years ago that uh, we, our first, I think it was our first service in Joe Skiles Church in Jeff City, and he announced that there was going to be a young singing group over the Church of God on, uh, right there, uh, in Jeff City, Southwest, Southwest Boulevard, at 2.30, 3 o'clock, and I've always loved music, so we went over there, and uh, that group got up and said something like this. I know we look so young, uh, you know, that you all can hardly believe that we're, you know, that we're out doing what we do because we look so young. We've solved that problem. Max, you don't look that young anymore. <laughs> hey, would you make the New Horizons welcome this morning? Amen. Well, duh, <laughs> we are not that young. It is so good to be here. I, I love this place. There are certain churches when you, you're going to get up and get out, you know, leave out early, you're thinking, oh boy, and this is an oh boy church. <laughs> We're so glad to be here and be with you and be with our sweet longtime friend Donna. Donna is so good to see you. I I wish I could call Dad and Mom and tell them Donna's doing good, that uh, they'll know it someday, they'll know it. And uh, I want you to know that uh, without him, you see the world and the mess it's in, it's because they're without him. But without him, I could do nothing, but with him, the Bible says all things are possible. Amen. Worship with us as we sing this old song.
you'd have listened to the New Horizons about 57 years ago, you'd have heard this song. I want to sing it for you this morning. Your first day in heaven. Oh, it's a great, great call. Your first day in heaven when you stroll down the road and have a view. There are mentions of the ride and you'll build up the side and the saints will always smile and say, I hate it too away. St. Peter said, well, hello there, and where have you been? Well, I told you, man, ready, so come out on in. And then he rang for an angel to practice a job. He spent swings of time to learn how to fly. Great, great, only if you ever stay in heaven when you stroll down the golden avenue. There are mansions that can ride and you can build every side and the saints walk the sun and say, a real old one and one that for that was real old and now we're going to sing what Becky calls her mac and cheese songs <laughs> we were we were raised around a piano that's where we were raised and we learned these songs in our living room we learned them in Sunday school we learned them in church and we sang them all on Sunday night so a lot of people have praise and worship now. We used to have Sunday evening choruses, and that's what we used to sing. So here we go. I hope you'll enjoy it.
There's joy in the man. A sinner has come home. There's joy in the can. We rejoice around the throne. kindergarten you know that has got to be the theme song of every kindergarten teacher in the world because if you ever try to take a line of kindergarten or somewhere keep walking guys keep walking no don't look that way don't look don't look up don't just keep walking you're hurting cats <laughs> you really are but you know I think sometimes we're like that we're walking and we go this way and we look up and we look all over the place and God said no you just keep walking just keep going just keep on don't stop we can't stop. Time is drawing near, and we can't stop. So if you're about ready just to sit down, get up, keep going. Probably 60 years ago, man, that sounds like a long time. I was a little girl, first church of the Nazarene in Lebanon, Missouri. My mama was the piano player, daddy was the preacher, so I sat with Evelyn and Sid about three rows back on this side. And they were singing, just as I am, last night of the revival. And my heart, it was hurting, because I wanted to go, and I wanted to turn my life to Jesus. I was a little girl. I was in first grade. And you know, that's been a long time. We've had a long walk. God has never failed in all those years. I have. I've made some dumb decisions. But you know, God has always been there. He's always been there. 
come on, Becky, it's okay, let's go, let's get up, let's go. And I'm so thankful that every hour of every day of my life, and it's, it's beginning to be the years are packing up, that every day, every hour, I have a Heavenly Father that has been with me, and he's been closer than a brother, and I'm telling you, I love him today. I wouldn't change anything, anything, because Jesus has been everything to me. Listen to this old song, Every Hour of Every Day. <laughs> Saving power, I fell on my knees and cried to him there. Oh, merciful Savior, hear a lost can remember when I got saved I, in the same church house and um, uh, I, I was just a young lad probably about six years old and uh, I didn't know what to do with myself after I asked Christ in my life and usually when I didn't know what to do with myself I took off running and that's what I did <laughs> and it, I, I went a couple rounds in the church itself and then out in the yard and round and round I went and I finally figured out I've got Jesus in my life, and uh, you know we uh, we started singing. I was 14, Max was 16, and then we had another couple brothers that was 13 and 15. And uh, I don't know if you had kids that of that age, but would you trust them to leave out and start traveling 
with a 16-year-old driver in a Mercury. And it's barely any kind of a sound system, but the guys, uh, the other two boys, one of them would play a bass and the other one would play the piano. And uh, the one that played the piano has passed away already. But any, anyway, uh, we would go and, and uh, we sang some of the same songs we're singing still, uh, almost 57 years later. And we're singing the songs that, the songs that have touched our lives over and over and over. And we're, we're even singing some of the new songs. There's a lot of new songs. Max writes them. Lots of folks write those songs. God gives them to them. And, uh, and uh, God has been and always will be uh, the, the best thing that could ever happen to somebody. He happened to us. And uh, we're so thankful to be here today. Uh, this church is beautiful to us. This church, the church is the people. And uh, not everywhere we get to go. Are the folks so beautiful? Seriously, you guys love us, and we love you. And uh, that's just part of being the church. I love the building, but I love this church that's inside here. You're a part of our family, and uh, uh, we're part of your family. And uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I love these kids down here. I've got 14 grandkids and almost four great-grandkids. And guys, thanks for being here today. I'm going to sing my testimony for you. And I think you can say amen to this song. <laughs>
How many of you consider yourself a child of the king this morning? <laughs> this song says I'm a child of the king. Sometimes I get excited when I think about who I am. That Jesus Christ would give his life to turn mine around. No use in being disheartened. No use hanging my head down. I can stand up and proudly say I was lost, but now I'm down. I'm a child of the king. And you know what that means. And he's not the boy who won't in my against me. He wants to drive me to the ground. He'll tell me a lie and then he'll try to get me feeling down. But I will not be defeated. I am my father's son. I'm a joy with Jesus Christ. The victory has been won. I'm a child of the King. And do you know what that means? It means I've got more than what for my name. child of the king happy about it this morning folks I'll tell you what it's just it's good looking out okay you're smiling you're worshiping with us and that's what it's all about we come to church here to lift up the precious name of Jesus and to worship not only to worship but we're going to celebrate a birthday today happy birthday to you I know, but I'm doing it now. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Brenda. Happy birthday to you. Give her a good hand. I'm so happy for her birthday today. I'm going to just, this is my wife, if you don't know. This is Brenda. She's going to. I'm not his daughter or his granddaughter. <laughs> She's my grandma. <laughs> I'm going to let her just lead into this song. Amen. It is so good to be here today with the New Horizons, and I always tell them I don't have to sing when I'm with them, but so far they're winning, and um, I am going to sing a brand new song. I have a brand new CD. I have a few of them with me today, but this song is titled, I Plead the Blood, and I want to talk to you real just for a few seconds about the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is stronger than anything. Last night at about 11 o'clock, I received a phone call that no mom, no grandma wants to get. Young people, listen to me real quick. Got a phone call that my 19-year-old grandson was being put in the hospital because of suicide thoughts. The enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. And if any person here today, regardless of your age, if you are having those thoughts, that comes straight from the pit of hell. I had my son on speakerphone, and we grabbed hands sitting there, and I was pleading the blood of Jesus Christ over Lucas Riley Carlton. And I want you to remember that name because I want you to call out to God. And I want you to let the enemy know he's not going to have my grandson. He's not going to have my children. 
We have a generation that the enemy is trying to wipe out. Young people, the blood of Jesus is all that you need in your life. It will help you through anything, I promise. Listen to this brand new song, I Plead the Blood. I've never been through this kind of trial before. Fighting something that I cannot see, a new kind. Fear raises its head, trying to choke out my faith. When I feel like I don't have a chance, I hear my voice And oh, so alone. Here it is, right here. Here's the answer. Stand on the word and never let go of your faith. Yes. When the battle is raging, just look at the mountain and say, Sing it with me today. I bleed the blood. ready for her singing that one. <laughs> Isn't that a great song? Man, I like that song. She does a wonderful job. I don't know how my brothers did it, but man, they married way above their grade, let me tell you. Both of them did. Danny's wife yesterday, his wife had a birthday yesterday, and at the end of our concert, I had a, a bag that of stuff that I had bought for her birthday. And I said, here, Danny. He goes, oh, is that my birthday present for her? No, it wasn't. Oh, forgot. he forgot. 
I don't know. But she, she stayed with you almost 50 years, so she is a saint, let me tell you. She needs a new chainsaw. She needs a new chainsaw, okay. <laughs> or a new coon dog or something like that, okay. Oh, he's a mess. He's a mess, but he can play the saxophone, I guarantee it. And uh, you'll enjoy it. By the way, Brenda has her new CD out there. She has it in CD, and she has it in flash drives. And we have CDs out there. We don't have flash drives. We're just not, we're not with it yet, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, and our CDs are buy one for $10, and you can find another one that you like, and you can get it absolutely free. Danny has some Christmas CDs, and, you know, it's getting there. And um, Walmart's already think it's, Walmart already thinks it's Christmas. They've got everything out. But uh, come back and see us on your way out. And if there's anything that you would like, we'd love for you to take it home. I've always said it's cheaper to buy us on a CD than to take us home because we eat a lot. And so, anyway, I will be quiet, and I will put you to work. Put your hands together and make my big brother welcome here today. <laughs> Give the New Horizons a good hand this morning. Right. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I'm enjoying this. I uh, just, I don't know, there's something very special about today. God's presence is so real, been real all day long with me, and I, I'm enjoying this, and this is, I love this kind of music. And uh, some of you might say, well, 
don't you ever have any younger groups? You, I don't know if there's any young groups out there. Any of the new kind? If you got one, let me know about it. We'll we'll get them in here. But uh, man, this is touching my heart this morning. And uh, God's so good. We have the ushers with the bags. Do we have those? Come on up. Uh, sometimes young people say something that really means something. And my nine-year-old great nephew Benny bent over to me a while ago. He said, the devil's so dumb, why don't he just go back to being an angel? Doesn't he know he can't beat our God? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Doesn't he know he was defeated at Calvary's cross 2,000 years ago? And that blood, amen, sets us free and gives us the victory. Hallelujah. Man, God is so good. God is so good. Hallelujah. We ought to receive an offering for the New Horizons. They're so gracious, and they don't request any certain amount or whatever. So I suppose we'd give them 25 cents. They would smile and walk out the door. Might chew us up for lunch, but uh, they'd smile at that time. But I want us to do the very best we can to bless them as they have blessed us this morning. Amen. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to be in your house to worship your name and to give you praise, honor, and glory. Pray that you'll bless this offering, Father, that it will be sufficient for their need and help them to continue carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the many miles and many years ahead. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I know that many of you probably have loved ones that are currently serving our country in the military. I know you've got a grandson, and Danny's grandson's on a nuclear sub somewhere. And, you know, those young men and women, they deserve the opportunity for us to pray for them because they're doing something that, you know, is keeping us safe, and they need the power and the, the power and the strength of God Almighty because there is an evil out there that is out to destroy people. And our young men and our young women are signing up to take care of me, and I appreciate it, every one of them. And one thing I think we can do is we can just stand proud of a of a land that we call the United States of America. Yeah, there's problems. We've got them. Every family does. But, you know, Brenda has said this. I've, I've heard her say, you know, if God's people will call on his name and, and repent of our sin, he will heal our land. So, people, let's get on our knees. If there's something that we need to repent, let's get it done. But in the meantime, we're going to sing these songs of our country. 
and I think you know them. Some of you have been singing. I invite you to sing along with these songs. I invite them to just come into your heart and be proud of being a citizens of the greatest country in the, United, in the whole world, the United States of America. Amen. Sing with us. This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to the New York Island, to the Redwood Forest, to the Gulf Stream water. This land was made for you and me. This land is your land.
You know, Pastor, uh, used to be when we was young, we used to try to do every date that we could take. We'd do Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night if we could get it. And we'd kill ourselves getting there. Now I'm 73 and we're doing Thursday, Friday, Saturday twice, now Sunday morning. And it's harder than it used to be. <laughs> but the story and the message of Jesus Christ is the same today as it was back then. It's just as precious to me today as it was back then. Young people, I want you to know that I'm glad you're here. This young man down here, he's, he's grown up way taller than he ought to be at 13. <laughs> Sitting there looking at him thinking, oh my goodness. No, it's you. <laughs> yeah, I worked, I, I growed for 73 years and I ain't near got that tall. I've got some other, I've grown some other places. You don't want to do that, you see. Keep like, stay like you are. You're just perfect. God made you. He made you like he wants you. A couple weeks ago on a Sunday afternoon, I got a call, and a friend of ours was, a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, was passing away. And uh, stopped Danny and, let me off and I went in the hospital Brenda was there and a man that I had known for as long as he had been to Lebanon which is probably 15, 20 years and good man he loved the Lord he loved to talk about the Lord but there you know the Lord said he's appointed us a time and we knew that time you just knew it that uh that was a wonderful experience because he knew the Lord and we knew the Lord and we got around his bed with his wife and we sang the old songs. And Charlie was laying there and as we were singing, his hands would go up and he was reaching. He was reaching for the hand of the Lord. I know that he was. He was hearing and seeing things that we didn't see. <laughs> oh, Lord, it's good to live for Jesus. But it's better to die with him. Amen. I've seen both. And I'll just tell you, it pays to serve Jesus. It pays to serve Jesus. In the funeral service, there was a young man who Charlie had mentored. He's an, Charlie was an old cowboy, and this guy was riding the, the, the circuit in Oklahoma. And he's a rodeo guy. And uh, he loved Charlie, and we'd, we'd loved up to him, and and uh, cared for him. And he, he, was, he was a good boy. We noticed while the singing was going on, as the preaching was going on in that funeral service, his eyes were this big around. And they were hungry for the message of Jesus. He was tired of who he was. Brenda looked at me and said, you need to go over and talk to him. I think he's ready. He didn't have to tell me what for. I knew what for. I went over to Zach and I asked him. I said, do you know Jesus? He says, oh, I've, I go to, I said, I'm not interested where you go, Zach. I'm interested in who you know. Do you know Jesus? Looked up here, and he looked down here. He didn't want to look me in the eye, but finally he looked me in the eye, and he said, no, I don't know Jesus. I said, do you want to know him? <laughs> Took him outside, away from the crowd. I led him down the Roman road. Shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with him, and he prayed the sinner's prayer and gave his heart to Jesus and he was, he, I, was I, I mean, I was sharing the scripture with him, but he, had, he was already made up in his mind. He was ready to pray. He knew where he had to go, and he went there. Gave his heart to Jesus. He looked at me, wiping tears out of his eyes, and said, now I get to go see Charlie. I said, yeah. Men and women, grandmas and grandpas, it pays to serve Jesus. The way you live is the way the young people that lives in your life.
the way they look at you. What I shared with that young man that day was the gift of God. His words is the revelation of Jesus Christ. These words. And it is a gift that he has given to you and to me and to my family. We're going to sing this song. And uh, it's a special song that's on our, it's a title song off of our new album out there. But God gave this song for moments like this. And I want to share with you a song entitled The Gift. <laughs> Everything that I have A name you can be proud of Thankfully more good than bad Out of all of the things that I treasure This Bible's most precious God's grace is still amazing. My greatest joy is to know that you walk in truth. If I have riches to leave, I'll give you Jesus. He's the most wonderful gift I can ever. A book that was black leather bound And any time I had a question Well, the answer could always be found Now that I am getting older And handing down our legacy God's grace is still amazing. My greatest joy is to know that you walk in truth. And if I have riches to leave, I'll give you Jesus. He's the most wonderful gift I can ever. You know, uh, 
I raised my kids in church, and I had a daughter who was, who was wayward. And, you know, whatever, you know, she just kind of, everything was with God was whatever. You know, I'll go to church because Mom made me. Well, in her life, she hit some storms. Her husband left her for another woman. A few years after that, um, my son-in-law was killed in a car wreck her little sister's husband. And, you know, she found out through those storms that there was nothing, whatever, just didn't take care of it. <laughs> she had to have the Lord. Yes. And she came back, and she's serving him now. And I'm so thankful. But, you know, a lot of us live in a whatever world. You know, whatever. Whatever could send you to hell. Whatever will not make heaven. That's just the way it is. I'm standing here tonight and today. I am sheltered in the arms of an almighty God. And it's not just whatever. There is safety and security in the arms of my heavenly father. Maybe you're living in a whatever world. Whatever. But it won't Make it to heaven on a whatever. If you are not sure that your life is in tune with the Lord Jesus Christ, the soon coming King, I just invite you while we sing this last song to come and just give your life to Jesus. He'll take the whatever out, and you can know that you know that you know. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what storm you're going through today, but I do know that if you are a child of God, his arms are around you. Even though it's still there, you're safe. Listen to the last song we do, and I, I, I appreciate you sticking with us. This is the last one. Sheltered in the arms of God. Is that where you're at today? Listen.
I have been blessed this morning. I hope you have as well. You know, we, uh, different stages of life, things are important to us. When you're 16, you got to get a driver's license. That's so important. 25, your insurance goes down a little bit. That's very important. But it doesn't matter what age you are. There's nothing more important than your relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And your family. Your family is the most precious gift outside of Christ that you can receive in this world. And, uh, you know, I, I used to think you could get saved one way, and that was to go to an old-fashioned mourner's bench and pray for an hour, shed tears, and your nose would run, and finally you'd reach through and you'd pray through and say, I'm saved. There's not a thing wrong with that. We need a lot more of that. But I found over the years you can get saved behind the wheel of a car, on a gravel road, by your kitchen sink, or on the third row of a church. Because it's the condition of your heart. That's when you personally come to that place that you said enough is enough. Not going that road anymore. Right now, right now, today, I'm going to open up my heart. I'm receiving Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Nobody came to the altar, and that's all right, but you're here today. And I look, I look out, and I say, I know most of you are pretty good, and you're probably all saved. Hope. But there may be one or two that's not. And I don't want you to leave this building today without having the opportunity receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Our New Horizons have done a, such a wonderful job, and that last song was just unbelievable. But if you're here today, right where you are, you feel the Spirit of God touching your heart as Jesus Christ himself giving you a personal invitation to become one of God's children. And I'm going to bow my head in prayer. I, I do this every funeral I preach. At the end of the service, I, I lead them all in a prayer. Sometimes they like it, sometimes they don't. But there's not a person that hears me preach or preach a funeral that'll go to hell without an opportunity not to go to hell. And you're here today, and I don't want one person in this building, not one. I love every one of you. And I want you to go to heaven. So maybe you're thought about it. Maybe not quite where you ought to be, but you might say today is the day. Today is the day that things are going to change in my life. So as I bow my head in prayer, you can pray out loud, you can pray under your breath, but I'm begging you, let today be the day that you ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins, come into your heart and into your life. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, we just come to you with all praise and thanksgiving. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you died on a cross to take our sins upon yourself to bear our burdens. That we might have the opportunity to know you as Lord and Savior, to go to heaven and not die and go to hell. Today, Lord, I'm going to pray this prayer, and I hope everyone in here will pray it with men. Some of you want to pray it out loud to encourage others. Let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, would you forgive me of all of my sins? Would you come into my heart today? Make me clean. Make me pure in your sight. I pray God today for your Holy Spirit to come upon me and to lead me every day of my life that I might serve you. When it's all over and said and done, I'll rise to a place called heaven. And today, Father, I accept it, I believe it, and I thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 If you pray that prayer, I'm going to ask you to do one other thing. I'm going to ask you before this day's over that you go up to somebody and you tell them, the Bible says we need to confess him with our mouth. Believe in our heart. But confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is our Lord. So you tell somebody. Don't be ashamed. You may be one of these teenagers. 
of the kids, one maybe a little bit older, whatever age you are, it doesn't matter. What does matter is we sang earlier that your name is written in heaven. Amen. Thank you for being here this morning. It is our privilege and our honor to have Brother and Sister Ice on the back row. He's one of our elder statesmen, preachers around this area. Great man of God and loves God with all of his heart. Brother Ice, could you, could you close us out in prayer today?